In the second lesson of meiosis, we actually are going to pay attention to what is different about meiosis from mitosis. So we're going to look at the stages. So I just have them written down here, but, but don't write anything for them yet. Um, I'm just telling you that right at the beginning here, that there is uh, two series of divisions in meiosis. So we talk about prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and then prophase two, metaphase two, etc. We are reviewing mitosis. So in early prophase of mitosis, the chromosomes become visible. But look what happens. When they become visible, they're not in single form, they're in duplicated form. So when you see those chromosomes in early prophase, they're actually kind of joined at the centromere and they have a duplicate for every single one. So they're all in duplicated form. Then when they, uh, this is prophase, when they line up in metaphase, this is the, the red and the black are homologs, might be homologs of each other, like this black one is the homologue to this red one that I'm moving right now, but they don't care about their homologue. They just line up at the center. They don't match up to each other. They just say, okay, I, I, you don't have to go with me just because you happen to be chromosome number one or number two. You just go wherever you want. Uh, don't have to hang around with me just because I'm your homologue. So they line up at the equator. This is mitosis. So now they're all lined up. We have six instead of 46 on this little uh, diagram. And what does mitosis do? It separates the chromatids. So each cell gets exactly the same number of chromosomes that the original cells had. So now the chromatids are separated. You've got two cells, each with six chromosomes in it. Meiosis starts the same way. Prophase, the first prophase, the chromosomes show up, they shorten and thicken, and they're in duplicated form. But something in prophase one happens that's different. The spindle fibers form, but they start uh, directing the homologs to join together. So the homologs actually find each other by some mysterious process and they join together to form what's called a tetrad because it's made of four chromatids. The process of the homologs finding each other is called synapsis. These are both words that we wrote yesterday in our first lesson. In metaphase one, they line up at the equator, but this time they're in a group of four. The tetrads all align up at the equator of the cell. And we're, uh, that's metaphase. Looks pretty much like metaphase in uh, mitosis, except you can't, because visually you can't really see that, but the homologs are paired together. Then here's a very important thing. In anaphase one, in anaphase of meiosis, instead of just the chromatids coming apart, the hom homologous chromosomes get segregated. Whoops, I went the wrong way with that one. These two went this way, and these two went this way. And in this case, perhaps uh, those original ones from that parent went that way. Let's put some a uh, few more red. The homologs separate in anaphase one. Segregation occurs. So now we actually have two cells, if I draw a line down the middle, that actually have only three chromosomes in them instead of six. There's only three chromosomes here, so the number has been cut from diploid to haploid. In telophase one, these chromosomes all kind of bundle together, again, and a nuclear membrane forms. But then immediately the cell, both cells, start lining up for uh, meiosis two, the second division. They all come together at the 
they they all uh, the the spindles form again, and these line up in a, uh, along a new equator of each cell, and then in uh, metaphase they're lined up metaphase of the second cell division, and the second cell division just separates the chromatids of each haploid cell. So you've got a haploid cell here and a haploid cell there and a haploid cell like this. And so now every meiosis always ends up oh, am I pen is working, ends up forming four cells. So you start off with one cell and you end up with four cells, but all four cells are haploid. So for, as you write down what happens during prophase one, what's new during prophase one? Well, look at the first part, nuclear membrane dissolves, centrioles split, blah, blah, blah. But look at this sentence. Chromosomes come together in homologous pairs. That's different. So write, just write the different thing. The chromosomes come together in homologous pairs then uh, this process and form a tetrad, which is known as synapsis, right? So they, you can see the two words we defined. So in prophase one, you get the, the joining of the homologous pairs. That, that's what's different from that and the other prophase. You just assume all the other stuff happens the same as mitosis. And then also you could mention for prophase one, crossing over can occur here during this tetrad. For metaphase one, there's just one sentence, homologous chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. Homologous chromosomes line up. Anaphase one is extremely important. Because notice what happens in anaphase one. Look at this. Homologous chromosomes move toward opposite poles. No, this is known as segregation. This is when you reduce the number of chromosomes. Reduction division occurs. This is when you turn from 46 chromosomes in a human cell to 23 because you're moving the homologous chromosomes to opposite poles, and this is when the real segre segregation happens. Telophase one looks pretty much like telophase of mitosis. They just gather together and a nuclear membrane forms. For meiosis two, the writing is very simple. You could put one of these big brackets like this. Whoops, I can't even show it. One of those big brackets and just say that these are exactly the same as in mitosis, except with half the number of chromosomes. I don't know if my ink is going to work. Probably not. Oh. So these phases are exactly like mitosis, but with haploid number of chromosomes, half the number of chromosomes. 